enthusiasts, preppers, and even you earthquake scaredy cats. It is now 7.35 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. And I'm here to dish out some serious warnings for California. And I am worried that the San Andreas is priming itself right now for a magnitude 7.0 or greater earthquake event. The reason why? Earthquake numbers are piling up in Central California, Southern California, and if you've been paying attention since July 4th and July 5th in the Ridgecrest area, you can see there's been a standoff between the San Andreas Fault and California's Eastern Shear Zone. This pattern over the last few months has seen thousands upon thousands of earthquakes on or parallel to the San Andreas Fault and California's Eastern Shear Zone. Based on what we can observe right now, there have been roughly 1,400 earthquakes throughout California over the past seven days. Uh, for some of the most major activity right now, I'm looking at this earthquake 3D map right here, and you'll see the ring of fire. Energy starts down here in the western Pacific, the far western Pacific, and it works its way up along plate boundaries. You can see it's been primarily at a magnitude High fours and low to mid fives have been uh, traveling around the Ring of Fire. This is over the last five days. Uh, I do see an uptick coming soon. And when we get a little more specific and get into what's going on in California, this is all the quakes over the last seven days. Uh, now, just an observation before I get completely into California. When I zoom out here, you can see all this quake activity and you see how there's this uh, directional path that goes up through Yellowstone, comes around through Washington, and it's just this big dance uh, right there. Uh, there are definitely some studies out there that show that there may be some magma, magma chambers for the Yellowstone volcano uh, up in Wyoming. And so that could be why you see some earthquakes that are traveling north and south. Uh, but that's not my primary focus today. My primary focus today is to look at what's been going on in California and assessing our earthquake risk. If you look at this map of the quakes, you see there's these clusters. And, I, and, and the biggest clusters are the ones you're going to see some purple and red. Of course, Ridgecrest whole Long Valley area up here, uh, down, the, of course there's a gap here in Owens Valley, but Long Valley Caldera, you see there's a, a cluster there that's been happening over the last week, really for months. Uh, and you'll see here in the Ridgecrest area, a continuance of what we've seen since July, uh, with just thousands of earthquakes peppering the region. So of course you've gotta be concerned about that area Further south, the San Andreas carries on near the Salton Sea. But when you look here at uh, the deserts in eastern Southern California, or yeah, the Palm Desert, Palm Springs, Riverside, and further south, Borrego Springs. I think you'll see that in here. You'll see there's these major clusters of earthquake activity. So I'm concerned about this area and then on the northern end of the San Andreas, what happened last night? 4.5 uh, near Pleasant Hill, California. And then you look right here, you'll see today another cluster right just a little bit north of Parkfield or the Pinnacles National Forest. Okay, you'll see 1242 Pacific time today a 4.7 struck so 4.5 last night Pleasant Hill 4.7 today north of Pinnacles so that is along the San Andreas or actually the one in the Bay Area was along the Calaveras or Concord faults um, right in between there see the Concord fault 
and the Calaveras Fault Zone. So uh, that is activity coming off the San Andreas. And so I have concerns there. So based on what we can observe uh, over the last seven days, there have been roughly 1,400 earthquakes. You see here 1,458. Uh, roughly 1,400 earthquakes in California. And that's over the past seven days. That's definitely enough activity to be concerned. And according to a September 23rd report by the Geological Society of America, faults have hot streaks and slumps, and they can change earthquake hazard assessments. So to paraphrase this report by the Geological Society of America, earthquake hazards depend on whether or not a fault is in a slump or a hot streak. So you can just see here the southern end of the San Andreas is definitely priming. You see Ridgecrest is definitely uh, since July been active with a 6.4 and a 7.1 back-to-back days. So Ridgecrest is on fire. And then now you've got an uptick in activity in the creeping section of the northern or central southern, I'm sorry, the northern and the central uh, San Andreas. So I'm concerned about that triangle. I know that's a big area to watch out for, but hey, if you live in California, you just got to pay attention. Time to prepare, okay? Um, so if you look at the USGS map, you can see where the biggest hot streaks are. And most importantly, the Ridgecrest area on the Eastern Shear Zone has been on a hot streak for months and it hasn't stopped. You can look at the Southern end of the San Andreas. It's been active with small quakes and this has been going on for several years now. And even the USGS suggests a scenario with a 7.8 magnitude with an epicenter at Bombay Beach at the edge of the Salton Sea uh, in a little south of Palm Desert. So I'll play this. This is the 7.8 scenario, okay, with the epicenter here near Salton Sea, Bombay Beach. And you'll see the shaking intensity in deep red. It's going to travel and keep going north up to Lake Hughes. And it's going to trigger fault offsets between 6 and 23 feet. So you definitely want to keep an eye on this area. And my personal observation is also to keep an eye on Central California as well. Parkfield, California, just slightly south or just slightly south of Parkfield along the San Andreas, has been known to regularly rip a 6.0 plus magnitude earthquake at intervals of 12 to 32 years apart. And the last 6.0 magnitude occurred in 2004, 15 years ago. And true story, I was walking, I took my car for an oil change and there was a long line and I decided to go eat lunch while this quick oil change place needed an hour or so to change the oil in my car. And as I'm walking back from eating lunch, I just remembered I had this sudden bout with vertigo and my legs were itching from the vibration and I did not know that I was walking during an earthquake. I, I couldn't tell, but I just know I lost all my balance and I thought it was very strange. And uh, anyway, so it was not a long walk, 15, 20 minutes. And by the time I went to go pick up my car, everyone's gathered around a TV and that was the 6.0 magnitude that struck in 2004. Uh, and that was centered in Parkfield. So you just saw some of the activity that I showed you from the USGS map in Parkfield, and maybe it's priming to happen again, or maybe something larger. So with so many earthquakes building in the northern and central California, it should raise suspicions. So basically, in conclusion to this, there's been just north of Pinnacles National Park, there have been at least 20 earthquakes alongside the San Andreas Fault. 20, including today's 5.0 that was reduced to a 4.7. So just in this area alone, we're talking about 20 earthquakes. So zoom in right here, and it's showing 38. All right, hold on, this is 20, 21 earthquakes just right here alone. Okay, so 
You definitely have to keep your eye on this northern end of the creeping section of the San Andreas because of what it's capable of. And we see a 4.7 and hopefully that's not a precursor. Quite frankly, with all these thousands of earthquakes in California, I do think these are all precursors to a big event. Okay? I just do. Uh, are they precursors for an event later today, tonight, tomorrow morning? Not trying to say that, but I do think that we have been getting ample warning times for a major earthquake in Southern California. I do not believe that the 7.1 in Ridgecrest is the remedy to our big earthquake fears. We've seen plenty 7.1s, 7.3s uh, in Southern California, Central California over the decades. Uh, but the big one is going to be in the high 7s, low to mid 8, okay? And that's going to be disastrous, especially if it occurs along the southern end of the San Andreas near Los Angeles. So do yourself and your family and your friends a great service and prepare now because the more of us who prepare, the less casualties will exist and the faster all of us will recover from potential disaster. All right, so until next time, stay tuned because I'll have more.